All right, joining us, Cub Swanson, getting ready for this monster fight uh, coming up. First of all, whenever you guys travel around, does the venue matter at all? Because I know Austin is really happy about you guys coming to town. Does it work both ways? Oh, definitely, because, uh, you know, we're performers at the end of the day. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you walk out and you prepare, you know, months and months for this, you walk out for the fight and you hear that crowd extra loud and you feel that energy, it's going to mean, it means that the, uh, the fight's going to be that much more exciting. Yeah, and how does it work with, uh, you know, we've actually talked to Dana White on Satellite before about growing this sport with some of these, you know, non-pay-per-view bouts. Do you like fighting on one of these fight nights where you know everybody that wants to see it can see it? Oh, definitely, because, you know, not everybody has the money to spend or sometimes they just not willing to go out to a bar to watch it because of family. Mm -hmm. So they can just kind of host little parties. It's free on TV, and, and it's, uh, they don't have to have, like, a big old ordeal to watch it. So mm -hmm. uh, it, it's pretty convenient for people to watch it live on TV for free. Yeah, so now let's get into this fight. You know, you got it here. Frankie Edgar, they, they, a guy that held the belt, I guess, with the lightweight belt for almost a couple years. Mm -hmm. How cool is it, how motivating is it to get in the ring with this guy and, and actually, you know, take it up to another notch? Uh, well, it's awesome to me because, uh, you know, he's somebody that I've seen fight for for a long time doing, you know, being at the level that I wanted to be at the top. Right. And, uh, you know, then it came to a time I've been on a win streak. He started calling me out mm -hmm. and uh, I earned my chance to fight for the belt, but I would have had to wait for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I asked for the fight and they said this was a big fight if I wanted to take it. And I yeah. said, of course. Yeah. I would think winner of this is in line for a title shot, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Winner of this should get the next shot at the title. So how hungry are you? You know, he had it for a while. You haven't worn that belt. I'm yeah. sure you just, you, you're ready to roll. Well, the crazy thing is, is we've been around around the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he got his uh, success early, and he, he's done well for, well for himself. Mm -hmm. uh, I, on the other hand, took the long, hard road, <laughs> and I've never had the opportunity to fight for the belt. And I'm actually the longest guy in the featherweight division, I've been in it the longest, yeah. and I've never had a chance at the title. And no matter what I do, it just seems like uh, I just have to keep proving myself. So, yeah. you know, once again, I got a tough opponent, and uh, I'm ready. I'm ready yeah. to prove it. Styles make fights. How is this? Uh, how do you guys match up? What can people expect to see? Uh, both of us get stronger as the fight goes on. Um, so, it, it, you know, you know it's going to be a good fight. Uh, he's super hard to finish. I've had a lot of finishes in my mm -hmm. in my uh, UFC career, so I'm going to be looking to to put him away, be the first guy to do that. Yeah. Uh, but it's no easy task. So that, there's a lot right on riding on this fight, and we're both excited. Well, you're doing the work off camera. You're telling me you're you're, you're sparring around training with Tim Bradley, mm -hmm. who a lot of people remember beat Manny Pacquiao mm -hmm. uh, in boxing. That, that how does that help you get ready for something like this? Well, me and Tim went to high school together, you know, and we come from uh, the Palm Springs area, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of great boxers out there. And uh, you know, he needed somebody with my style for his next fight. He's mm -hmm. fighting December 13th. And uh, I needed somebody about his height, so it worked out. Yeah. And I built myself up to that level uh, where I can hang with guys that, in the boxing world uh, playing their game, yeah. and just boxing. Yeah. And so it's an honor for me to help him prepare and him help me. For sure, for sure. As far as like you said that you guys have had a little exchange, maybe a little talk on back and forth, has it gotten to that point where it's getting personal between, between oh, the two? Oh, no, we have nothing but respect okay, for each other. Cool. Uh, we're... we're you know, both competitors, we both have a lot of pride, mm -hmm. and uh, we can shake hands and uh, fight right after. So, yeah. uh, you know, the respect is there, but we're both going to come to fight. Sure. Consummate pros. I mean, that's what yeah, it's about. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. The, um, I, I was interested how you got into this. I mean, it's not everybody thinks, hey, I'm going to make a living at combat, mm -hmm. yet it sounded like you knew, I need to stay out of trouble. I'm going to get plugged into this thing. How did that work? Well, you know, uh, I've always been a pretty dedicated person, and uh, mm -hmm. soccer was my passion. I mm -hmm. played all the way to junior college. Uh, then I just I didn't go anywhere after junior college. Mm -hmm. uh, life kind of hit me. Uh, I had to pay rent, do all kinds of things, got into a little bit of trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and I needed to straighten myself out and uh, look towards martial arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that really centered me, you know. And, uh, you know, when you try martial arts, you want to see if it's real. Does it work? Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw some MMA fights, some local shows, and I, I wondered if I could do that, and I wanted to try it. Yeah. So uh, I put myself to the test, and 
and uh, started fighting professionally from there. Yeah. That, that simple. And how cool is it, the growth of UFC and the fact that now there are the, there is a featherweight division. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see, as you were starting out, that one day you would be fighting for possibly a featherweight belt? Well, the, the crazy thing is, is, you know, when most people go to college and they, they plan their life, that's kind of what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I started doing this. I, I saw that I, I had a talent for it. Other people saw it in me. So um, I knew that the UFC was starting to get bigger and bigger, and I just... I had a passion for it and I knew it was going to get big. Mm -hmm. I, I just knew that people would have to love this sport because it's so real. And, uh, and to me, it's the ultimate sport. Yeah. And so I took it as a challenge to myself to, to make this my profession. And I figured that if I did well at it when I was peaking in my career, uh, the sport would be peaking too. So uh, yeah. I, I took it as a business decision. Played it right. Yeah. What's something that uh, the average person, our average viewer might not know about Cub Swanson? They're seeing you. As somebody that goes in and handles their business, you got a soft side to you? Is there something interesting that we don't know about? Uh, yeah, well, it's like, uh, you know, my logo is Killer Cub. This is my logo right here. Uh -huh. It's basically a, a, a little cute bear with a, a Jason mask looking mm -hmm. thing on him. And that, that's kind of my personality. Uh, I'm very quiet. I'm very, very relaxed person. Mm -hmm. But when you see me fight, I, I, I'm pretty vicious. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty loud. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the complete opposite of my normal personality. Right. And uh, I, I see that the harder I fight, the, the more relaxed I am in my everyday life. Yeah. So when people meet me in person, they kind of trip out. They, they expect <laughs> me to be mean or something, but that's right. just not me at all. And did I do my homework right? You even helped kids? With, you've done that before? Kids with yeah. cerebral palsy? Uh, yeah, I used to work with uh, children with disabilities in mm -hmm. the after school program before I fought. And then I, I quit that to, to move away and pursue this full time. Yeah. And then ever since then, now I actually go and talk to kids at the juvenile hall and, uh, yeah. and try to tell them, you know, that there is a way out. And I myself uh, came from that and, and look what I did. So I try to be a positive role model for those kids. Sure. Lastly, when you come to Austin, you're obviously, it's a business trip. But are you going to have time to, to experience what, what we love about this place? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I, I play golf, so I think yeah. uh, one of my sponsors on it, they, they're out here and they want to take me to Top Golf. So nice. I'm going to go test that out mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, have some fun and then uh, probably hit the football game tomorrow. Very nice. All right, we'll see you out there. All right, cool. <laughs> cool. Pleasure, Pleasure. meeting you.